What's up, my friends? My name is Zura, and I am the Code Talk. In this video, I'm going to share my personal setup of VS Code for Laravel development. I'm going to start with extensions, and I'm going to split the extensions into three parts. First, I'm going to talk about must-have extensions. Then, I'm going to talk about good-to-have extensions. And finally, I'm going to talk about the extensions which you might find useful, but I don't use. And I'm going to also explain why I don't use these extensions. After extensions, I'm going to talk about settings. Then I'm going to talk about my personal live snippets for PHP and Laravel. And finally, I'm going to share my personal choice of color theme and the icon theme for VS Code. If you find this video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe for more useful content like this. And let's jump into the video. Here's my fresh installed VS Code and I have Laravel 11 project opened. First of all, I'm going to deactivate this show welcome page on startup. I don't want it to be opened. Then let's go into extensions and I'm going to search for PHP. There are two main extensions when speaking about the PHP. One of them is PHP all in one and second is PHP IntelliFence. They are very similar. They have very similar features, but my personal preference is PHP all in one. You can install whichever you want. You can even try to install both of them. But again, my personal preference is PHP all-in-one, so I'm going to install this. Once this extension is installed, we can check in the installed extensions, and we're going to see actually four extensions. The Composer extension was installed as a dependency of the PHP extension. There's PHP Profiler and IntelliPHP, which is AI-based auto-completion for your VS Code. This is a very intelligent one, so this is one reason why I prefer PHP All-in-One versus PHP IntelliFence. It comes with other extensions which are very helpful. The next extension in must-have list is Laravel Blade Snippets. This comes with the Blade Snippets and Syntax Highlighting. And now if we open Blade PHP file, the syntax is highlighted and that happens because of this Laravel Blade Snippets extension. The next extension I recommend is Laravel Blade Formatter. This is also a must-have extension because without this you won't be able to format your Blade files nicely. Once the extension is installed, I'm going to open Welcome Blade PHP, which has a minified single line Blade HTML inside. As you see, everything is on a single line. So I'm going to right click and format document, and it's going to nicely format the entire Blade file, which is awesome. The next must-have extension is Laravel Extra IntelliSense. This provides an extra IntelliSense to your Laravel project. It gives you auto-completion for the road names, for the views, for the variables, and a couple of other places. So I also think that this is a must-have extension for your Laravel setup. Let's move into good-to-have extensions category. And the first one is Laravel Go to View. Before I install the extension, we can see that whenever I hit the control on my keyboard and mouse over on this welcome view, it doesn't do anything. Once we install this Laravel Go to View, then open this welcome controller and hit control on the keyboard, we see that uh, here is an underline. And when we click mouse click on this, it's going to open this uh, view as well. Although you can live without that extension, it is very helpful and it's going to save you a lot of time when building Laravel projects. The next good to have extension is Laravel Go to Components. It works very similar to Laravel Go to View, but in this case, we can hit Control on the keyboard and with mouse, we can follow the components. For example, I'm going to open Navigation Blade PHP file. And here we are using a couple of components, for example, X application logo. And I hit control on my keyboard and using mouse, I can follow this component and see its content. Or I can check another component. The disadvantage of this is that it cannot identify if there is a component class and if the component path is basically changed. So if we go in the app view, up layout component and we can see that the view is changed it's not the default one it, it's coming from the layouts dot up php we can open this through control and mouse but this comes from the go to view extension however if we again open this dashboard blade we cannot follow this um, x up layout component that is the disadvantage, but in most cases, your components will be located in the correct folder, in the components folder, and you can follow them using control and mouse. The next extension is Prettier, which is probably the most downloaded extension of all time. Um, we're going to install that. We are going to need this for CSS and JavaScript, not specifically for HTML or PHP, but for CSS and JavaScript. The next extension is Auto Rename Tag. It is a very useful extension. Whenever we change the opening HTML tag, this extension will change closing HTML tag as well. 
In the VS Code, there is a new setting which is called linked editing, and that kind of works in HTML files, but according to my experience, that linked editing doesn't work nicely on the Blade files. For example, if I open Welcome Blade right now, and if I change this div opening tag, or let's change this right here, into nav, for example, the closing is also changed right here. Without that specific extension, that doesn't work like this. Another good to have extension is highlight matching tag. Whenever we open any blade file and we hit on the opening tag, it's going to highlight its closing matching tag as well. Without this extension in the latest version of VS Code, this highlights. But again, in blade file, sometimes I came across two issues when I had I could not identify what was the closing tag and this extension doesn't hurt anything it helps in most cases so i also recommend to have that extension it is not must have but it's good to have the next extension is called intellisense for css class names in html if you are going to work in blade you're going to probably write some css classes there and that extension is very helpful and it gives you this intellisense auto completion when working in the blade files so i'm going to need that as well Laravel by default has a support of Talwin CSS and I'm going to install Talwin CSS extension as well to have these Talwin CSS classes auto completion in the blade files. Next, I'm going to install editor config for VS Code. Again, this is good to have because I generally try to respect the editor config file located in the project. If you scroll down below, we're going to see right here uh, editor config file. If you don't know what is editor config, you can check my specific video about this. I have a dedicated video regarding editor config and I'm going to install this as well. Now let's talk about the extensions which you might find useful, but I don't use. And I'm going to explain why. First of all, I'm going to install this Laravel Artisan extension and I'm going to explain why I'm not going to use this extension. That extension helps you to work with the artisan. For this, we're going to hit Ctrl and P, then I'm going to type artisan, and then we're going to type make whatever, make controller, for example. Then we have to provide the controller name, for example, user controller. Then it asks me what type of controller I want. I want the resource controller. Then it asks me another question. Then I have to provide my model and so on. So that's too many questions for me. I generally prefer to bring up the terminal and type a single comment by myself. I know exactly what I'm going to type. PHP artisan make controller dash dash resource dash dash model equals user whatever and I'm going to hit the enter once and it's going to generate the controller and everything what I need. I don't like that many questions. That's why I'm not going to probably use these extensions. I generally prefer to interact with the terminal through PHP artisan comment by myself. But I see for beginners, this is actually very useful. If you have hard time remembering all the parameters PHP uh, Artisan Make Controller has, for example, you can use this extension and it's going to ask you all the questions and it's going to make sure that you don't make any mistakes. So you might find it useful, but I'm not going to use it. The next extension from the category you might find it useful, but I'm not going to use is Laravel Snippets. So that provides a couple of prefixes for the snippet auto-completion, like for array, for out, for cache, for road, and there are many such type of things. You can check its readme, but I found in practice that this is not actually very convenient. Again, this is my personal preference. You might absolutely find it useful, so I recommend to check it out by yourself. Read its readme and everything, but I think I'm not going to use this extension because um, I generally prefer to have my own live snippets for these or that things. The last extension is Laravel Blade Wrapper. And what does that do? For example, in Blade, whenever I select some code, then I can hit Ctrl, Shift and T, and it's going to give me a suggestion of uh, Blade directives. I can choose if, for example, and I'm going to hit the Enter, and it's going to wrap with if condition my selected HTML. That's pretty useful, actually, not very bad, but uh, generally I prefer to do the following. I can select my code, I can cut that, then I can use this add symbol and it's going to give me the auto completion from the Laravel Extra IntelliSense extension and I can use if right here, hit the enter, I can obviously type some condition, then paste my code right here. So you can compare whichever method you prefer. Again, I'm going to do both of them. So I'm going to select this, Control Shift T, then I can type for each, hit the enter and it's going to wrap inside for each and I'm going to, I can change these two variables. And the second approach is cut, then I can type for each, then I can paste the code and I can type these two variables. 
Based on my working experience, there is not that much difference between the approach what lateral blade wrapper suggests me and the approach I generally go. That's why you might find it useful, but I'm not going to use it. Now let's move into settings category and there are a few settings I want to mention. First of all is the format on save. I'm going to tick this. Whenever I save my blade file or PHP file, I want my formatter to automatically format this for me. The next setting is linked editing. This is exactly when you change the opening HTML tag and it's going to automatically change the closing HTML tag. But according to my experience, this did not work perfectly for blade files. That's why we installed auto rename tag extension. But still, I'm going to enable this because that's the default setting for VS Code for HTML files. And the last setting what I'm going to modify is the default terminal. I have a couple of terminals. I have PowerShell, Git Bash, Command Prompt. I also have WSL. And I'm going to set Git Bash as a default terminal for my VS Code. Whenever I don't develop on uh, WSL, I use Git Bash. Whenever I develop on WSL, I use Ubuntu WSL as my default terminal. So I'm going to set this select default profile and I'm going to choose Git Bash. And basically every new terminal now will be in Git Bash. According to my experience, Git Bash is much more intelligent terminal and has much less issues than PowerShell or CMD. Now let's talk about live snippets. I'm going to open and I'm going to create new live snippet for PHP. Now I'm going to copy and paste one live snippet and I'm going to explain this and then I'm going to copy and paste everything else what I have. So this is the prefix is pubf and it's going to basically generate the skeleton for the public function. Now I'm going to open user PHP. I'm going to move down and I'm going to type pubf and hit the tab and it's going to generate the following boilerplate code. I can type something, then I can hit the tab and the cursor comes down right here and I can return one and that's it. Let me actually copy and paste my all available live snippets. So here I have this public function, private function, protected function. I also have public static function, which has the prefix pubsf, public static function. We have the private static function protected. And I also have this belongs, which is interesting. I'm going to show this to you as well. I'm going to open user PHP, scroll down below, and I'm going to type belongs, hit the tab, and it's going to generate the following boilerplate code. For example, user belongs to country. Then I'm going to hit the tab again, but not like this. So if there's an IntelliSense, you should hit the escape on the keyboard so that the IntelliSense is gone. If you want to show the IntelliSense, hit control and space. Then here we have this IntelliSense. If I hit tab right here, it's going to show this, uh, whatever it is. So I'm going to undo this. And whenever there is IntelliSense, escape, and then hit the tab. And then cursor moves right here. And we can just type country model name right here if it's available. In the same way, we have has m prefix. When I hit the enter, it's going to generate this has many boilerplate code. For example, user has many orders. And I'm going to hit the tab right here and I'm going to provide order. And that's it. This is all what you need to do. So this gives you possibility to very easily generate the relations from your in your model. And this is going to save a lot of time of you. I recommend to create your own live snippets right here based on your workflow. Try to speed up and try to save your time. Now let's talk about my color theme and my icon theme. As a choice of my color theme, I'm using material theme. Let me install icon theme as well, and then I'm going to activate both of them. So in the icon theme, I'm going to type atom material icons. Since we have both color theme and the icon theme installed, let's activate them. First, let's choose the color theme. And here are the following options. But my personal preference is Palanite. And I generally go with the Palanite high contrast because there is a significant difference between the left sidebar and the main content area. You can choose whichever you want. I'm going to set the Palanite high contrast. Now, let's set the icon theme. I'm going to go with the Atom Material icons, and it's going to give you the following uh, icons right there. You can try others if you want so, but I'm going to set this into Atom Material icons. 
and the atom material icons also comes with the product icon theme and you can choose atom material icons right there as well and it's going to change the icons on the sidebar right here as well and at the bottom as well so i'm going to switch between default and atom material icons and you can compare them you see everything almost everything not almost but everything is changed in vs code where you see the icon so I like this one, so I'm going to set this. And now let's open the controller or blade file, and we're going to see different colors. That's, um, that's what I like. We can open welcome controller as well, and this is how code in PHP looks like. All right, my friends, this is my setup. We installed extensions. I showed you uh, settings, live snippets, and my personal theme and icon theme as well. If you find this video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe for more useful content. If you love my content and want to support the channel, you can check my Patreon page or buy my course on my website, thecodetolic.com. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next time.